it was uh, so easy to prepare for the Texas-Arkansas game because here you had the numbers one and number two teams in the country and ranked in, in that particular spot. And going back to Arkansas, Bud Wilkinson and I both always loved to come to Arkansas. Bud, Bud loved it um, for Jack Stevens and, and other Arkansas friends, uh, as I did. But um, Bud liked the fact that two very close friends were going to be pitted against one another and their coaching skills possibly would come to the front, Frank Broyles and uh, Darrell Royal. And both very close friends of Jack Stevens. So, you know, I can imagine what was going through Jack's mind because what went through my mind, how am I going to stay impartial when this telecast? Well, I knew I, I had better because President Nixon um, was there and was in our booth quite a bit during the game and was interviewed, had the pleasure of interviewing him at halftime. And he, he knew a lot about sports casting and I knew if I were being partial, he'd tap me on the shoulder and probably do this. No, no, that's, no, no. So that was the uh, hardest part in the preparation was to say, now you love Daryl Royal and you love Frank Broyles and you like Texas football and Arkansas football. Now you're growing up and you can be down the middle. I think I was, really. Now, there's so much we can credit to the late Rune Arledge, four and two, because uh, he was a genius that started ABC Sports and also later took over ABC News and brought it to the top. And then, of course, he changed the scheduling of the game, the date, and that's his genius. Rune would um, often visit uh, telecast sites, whether it was bowling, whether it was golf, and, of course, it was football, which he dearly loved uh, because it's true football that he hired me because I was doing the New York Giant games, and he flat out told me, he said, because I was a Giant fan, that's why I brought you away from CBS. But Rune um, rescheduled that game with the help of Walter Byers at the NCAA from an early season game to the last game, which made it for the national championship. And when the president came, Rune, show you how smart he is and how we all should be perceptive like he is. He sits with President Nixon in attendance to the Texas-Arkansas game. It really was a special deal. And he made it his point to fly into Fayetteville and uh, came in the day before and uh, be at the game and enjoyed it like all the fans did because it was a game that um, made the ratings on college football go up in, in the future. Well, I had done, uh, I don't think I'd done a game at um, Fayetteville. I'd done a couple in Little Rock. And when it, when it came to the Texas-Arkansas game in 69, um, Frank Broz had told me, you're going to see a lot of red in the stands today. And I thought, well, you know, I've done Oklahoma, Nebraska. But um, it was the first time I saw Arkansas red and Texas burnt orange. And it was the most unusual sight because I always went down on the field before the game to check the condition of it along with Bud Wilkinson, our analyst. And um, they were really up and they were very perceptive. They spotted both Bud and me on the field and they started cheering. There may have been some booing too when they spotted Bud and me, but I only remember the cheers. And uh, it couldn't have been more hospitable. Now we had done that before at other stadiums and we had oranges thrown at us, all kinds of things, but not in Fayetteville. Fans didn't throw a thing, just used their hands and applauded. So we knew we were in for a very special event that day, and we certainly were. I'll go on record right now saying it was the most exciting and most important college football game I ever televised. And that includes some 600 telecasts. So I hope that's paying tribute to that event. Because it had everything. They had a Texas coach uh, passing on fourth down, which is unheard of, of course, with the wishbone. But uh, it paid off and um, got ahead and stayed ahead.
President Nixon and I were old friends because when he was vice president, we had the same business manager, a man named Vinnie Andrews in New York. And when he'd come to the city, he'd often call Vinnie and say, get Chris, and we'll have the three of us have dinner, which we would do. And we didn't, we didn't talk about politics. He was vice president. He'd only say to me, Chris, why don't we switch jobs? You'll become vice president and I'll be sportscaster. Because President Nixon was a frustrated sportscaster. He truly was. And he knew a lot about, about sports. So uh, the great gesture he made to the country and to the game of football was right there in Fayetteville. When he came in the worst kind of flying weather that you can imagine, or if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. He came and he didn't leave early because he went to both dressing rooms. And that showed me something about him. Late in my um, career as do, of doing college games, I got the idea of collecting the coaches' caps. I mean, the one they actually wore in the game, not, you know, reaching in a desk drawer and giving me a brand new one. I wanted the one that had the sweat or the sweatbands. And I had a Texas one already, but I hadn't uh, gotten a Frank Broyles, Arkansas A. And um, I wouldn't dare ask him uh, before the game. It was too big, the game. But he was interviewed by Bill Fleming at, at the end of the game. And it was the most generous comments I think I've ever heard about a rival coach when he had been beaten by one point. He praised Darrell Royal from here to there, and rightfully so. But the thing we remember is Frank and all his disappointment, unhappiness, he remembered that weeks ago I had asked him for, in Arkansas, a coach's cap. Bill Fleming came running because we were headed for the airport, and I saw him with this red Arkansas cap in his hand, and I thought, Gee, I wonder where he got that. And he gets in the car and he said, Coach Broyles wants you to have this. Can you imagine? Just lost a game by one point and remembered that a sportscaster had asked him for a coach's cap, his cap, and he gives it to me. Cherished possession, really.